Hey dudes, and welcome back to The Bants. As always, I am your host, The Bants. And once again, it's the beginning of the week, so it's time for our first What's Happening in Fashion this week, so let's just get right into it. And first up, of course, we have our headlines for the day. And in our first headline of the day, Balenciaga just put out an apology to all of their Chinese customers over what happened recently at one of their French stores. And honestly, all I can really say is the Balenciaga really fucked up here. So apparently what happened was while some Chinese customers were attempting to enter the store to buy some product, they were told to just queue outside and the regular owner's management of the shop kept allowing Parisian customers inside. And then afterwards, and once again, allegedly, when a couple resellers got into a scuffle out in front of the shop, a couple of the security guards for Balenciaga decided to target only the Chinese people. And once again, they fucked up. That's all there really is to it. I mean, seriously, Balenciaga. Of course, French people, and specifically Parisian people, are not really known for being inclusive to pretty much anyone. But of all the different people, of all the different people that you chose to be racist to, it was the Chinese. Yeah, good fucking choice there. I mean, I really, really wouldn't be surprised if the Chinese made up the majority of the people buying Balenciaga. Because remember, this is a very hype brand, even though it is run by Denma. Clothes don't make hype, Gusfala, or however the fuck you pronounce his last name. And even though Balenciaga already knows they fucked up because one, they've already put out two different apologies, and two, they've already suspended and more than likely will fire the management and all the people working at that location. But honestly, it's probably too little too late. From what people are saying, there's actually video footage of the guards actually like choke holding the Chinese people out in front of the store during the scuffle. And this has already been circulated on a lot of Chinese social media. And there's already been talks of boycotting on Chinese social media too. So yeah, looks like, as I said, you really fucked up here, Balenciaga. And even though this whole situation is pretty messed up, and I really do feel bad for the people that were involved on the Chinese side, of course, obviously, when it comes down to it, a shot at Balenciaga is a shot in the right direction for me because fuck Denma, so I don't really care. Then hot off of the Yves Saint Laurent announcement, another brand, this time La Mer, has announced that they will no longer be showing at Men's Paris Fashion Week. Now obviously this story is a little bit different than the YSL announcement because they are not showing in Paris at all, they are showing in New York instead. However, La Mer will still be showing at Paris, but this time they'll be be showing at Women's Paris Fashion Week, but they will be doing a co-ed show instead of just a women's show. And even though many brands have been going this way, and I mean in the sense of co-ed way, I personally, and once again this is just my opinion, don't really like this. And the reason why is even though yes, I understand how much time and effort goes into doing two different shows for two different seasons in the sense of spring, summer, and then fall, winter. I get that it's a lot of work and it takes a lot of time and a lot of effort and a lot of cleanup. And no excuse to that. I'm totally understanding of why people are doing co-ed. But just to me, in my opinion, I like to see pieces that I know that I can wear throughout an entire show, I guess you could say. Like if I want to look at women's wear, I will look at women's wear. But usually I want to look at menswear because that's the stuff that is made that I can actually wear because it's made in sizes that I can actually fit. And usually when people do co-ed shows, they mix it up. So usually if I have to go through 80 slides, it's not the first half is women's or men's and then the other half is the opposite. And honestly, if they did something like that, I might be more inclined to be interested in that from now on. But at the very least, it is a very interesting announcement because we are seeing more and more brands going co-ed and we'll see what this does to the industry further if anyone else decides to go this way now too. 
All right, and now with our headlines done, let's move on to our art stories for the day. And first up, street artist D-Face got his first solo exhibit, this time in Paris, France. And so if you want to see a little bit more of his work or want to know a little bit more about him, I definitely check out some of these photos. And of course, congrats D-Face, very nice job on your first exhibit. Then Ron English showed off some new toys, mainly inspired by weed plant designs, although using some more of his well-known motifs in the form of the Spongebob face and the smiley that he's renowned for. So if you're interested in maybe seeing some new work from Ron English or maybe picking up one of his toys, definitely check this out. Then Daniel Rich showed off some of his newest paintings during his exhibit which is now going on strong in New York City. And honestly, if you're a fan of architectural photography, you'll definitely like this. And you'll also really like it if you're a fan of just minimalistic architectural painting as well. So either way, definitely check this out. And if you happen to be in New York anytime soon, i definitely give it a look as well too. And lastly, Juxtapose sat down with artist Ramiro Devaro Comas to explore some of his new work and pick his brain a little bit. And honestly, if you're a fan of very unique caricatures and very nice use of different mediums, i definitely at least look at these photos, otherwise very nice interview as well too. Alright, and now moving back on into fashion, Montclair showed off their Spring Summer 2018 lookbook and honestly, it was really fantastic. Known mainly for their use of puffy coats and jackets, Montclair does a really nice job here of mixing that idea up by adding a lot of summer pieces that go really nice here and a lot of lighter materials and textiles as well. There's also a very nice use of color in this collection, both in the Montclair synonymous form, that is being red, white, and blue, which they do masterfully here as you'd expect them to, and as well as a lot of other colors and prints that you wouldn't expect out of them that go really nice in a summer collection. And as if that wasn't enough in and of itself, there are actually some very interesting pieces in here as well too, with some very interesting tech aesthetics and textile and just coloring, dyeing, really just a myriad of different little things that doesn't matter what kind of aesthetic or genre of fashion you're into, there's something here that will definitely excite you in one way or another. So I really gotta say, fantastic job Montclair. Between this and your Genius collaborations, you are doing a fantastic job this year. And speaking of coat companies, the North Face just showed off their newest Sashiko capsule collection, and honestly, I really, really enjoy this. For all the crap that I've been talking on the North Face recently about not understanding the meaning of what cohesiveness means in a collection, it seems like they finally got it right here, and at the very least, I can appreciate that. And I'll be honest, as much as I really, really do want to enjoy these pieces because, you know, they involve everything that you think I would like. They're really nicely dyed indigo, they have some really nice sashiko on them, and some really nice patchwork as well. They're just not authentic feeling. Now let me explain. If you've ever actually looked at a nice piece of patchwork or a nice piece of boro or a nice piece of sashiko, it feels not perfect. It feels wrong in some points. It feels like there might have been errors that weren't fixed and that in and of itself kind of leads to the beauty of the piece. Like you can tell some time and effort went into these pieces and that it was all done by hand. But with these pieces, you don't necessarily get any of that. You can tell everything was done in a factory. You can tell everything here is just meticulous and perfect. And that's not really what Sashiko is all about. However, I do have to say that if you've always been interested in this kind of style, this boro, this patchwork, these pieces that are very kind of off limits usually due to their price point, this is definitely worth checking out from an entry level perspective because even though it is the North Face, these pieces are still relatively on the rather cheap side. But to leave this on one final party note, why is this considered part of the Urban Exploration series? Now that 
doesn't make any fucking sense. Then Uniqlo showed off their UT Where the World exhibit, and honestly, this is just amazing. Going through the extensive backlog of Uniqlo UT's 15 years, the people behind Uniqlo decided to choose a thousand of their favorite and more memorable graphic designs and put them on display for the world to see. Now, unfortunately, this exhibit is only in Toronto at this point in time, so if you happen to be in Toronto, definitely go check it out. But otherwise, Hypebees did a nice little interview with some of the people behind it, and if that's not enough, I would at least check out some of these pictures. I've linked everything, obviously, in the description down below, but really, really amazing exhibit and I really would like to see some other brands follow suit on this because this is just fascinating. Then brand Noongoons showed off their newest collaboration this time with legendary jazz trumpeter Chet Baker and for as much as I like it I'm not getting it. Now fortunately this collection is actually somewhat decent. There actually is a decent amount of color and a nice amount of graphics and a decent amount of styles too. There's not just t-shirts, although there is a bunch of t-shirts, there's also some hoodies and there's even some hats with his signature on it, even though this lookbook is doing a terrible job at showing off all these pieces. And with my somewhat praise of this collection and my personal love of jazz music, you may be wondering why why I'm not interested in this collection, and that's because the price is absolutely bullshit. Now I'm no stranger to buying expensive clothes, believe me, but when you expect me to pay $60 for a t-shirt and $180 for a pullover from a brand that's streetwear from Southern California, which means there's no export tax, there's no excessive refinement of pieces, it's just normal garb. That is some stupid ass shit. So unless you are absolutely just in love or infatuated with Chet Baker, don't, please don't support this shit. This is just fucking stupid. And lastly, let's end it with a quickie. Riot Hill showed off their first ever collection, and all I gotta say is, what a terrible start for an inaugural collection. Ever wonder to yourself what would happen if some fuckboy went into a coma back in 2013, and then woke up early this year and decided to take all those ideas and put them into a new clothing brand? Well, look no further. Though I do have to say the tactical bags are pretty nice. And when your brand's tagline is under 18 requires you to grow the fuck up immediately, you know you're in for a treat. So with all that said, three quick little words to Riot Hill. Good fucking luck. Alright, and with that finally out of the way, let's move on to our articles for the day. And first up, Grailed put out another nice history of this time of Daiki Suzuki and his brand, which you've probably heard of, called Engineered Garments. So if you're a fan of his work and want to know a little bit more about it, i definitely give this a read. Then Grailed also put out a very nice, deep, and insightful article on what they call understanding the drop, aka when a new product releases in fashion. And they really go into some nice detail here. They talk about some of the psychology behind it, some of the economic decisions behind it, some of the kind of pros and cons that go along with it, and then they even go into some ideas about, you know, the aftermarket, aka the reseller's market. And overall, very well written article and if this idea or even the idea of streetwear has ever been interesting to you then definitely give this a look it might open your eyes to some new concepts in streetwear then fast co design put out a very interesting article on why they believe that unbranding is dumb and they go into some pretty interesting ideas about why certain brands that are super well known are just immediately trusted because of their branding and how on the flip side brands with no branding whatsoever can cause you know choice fatigue and things along those lines 
Overall, very interesting article, and if you're into design, whether it be fashion or graphic, or just the idea of what branding means to business, definitely give this article a look. And lastly, Heist Nobody sat down with the creator of FTP to talk a little bit about his take on the brand and even more so just a little bit of a history on the brand. So if you're interested in just streetwear in general or maybe you want to know a little bit more about FTP, then here you go. All right, guys, and with that, we come to the end of our first whip of the week. I hope you enjoyed. And as always, if you guys want to see any of the articles I talked about today or look at any more of the lookbooks that I wasn't able to include, I've linked everything down in the description below. And if you are new to the channel, then welcome. We do this with this What's Happening in Fashion video twice a week on Mondays and Fridays. So if you enjoyed it, feel free to subscribe. Otherwise, if you do have any questions or comments or concerns, feel free to hit me up in the comments down below. I'm always willing to talk fashion. And with that, guys, as always, thank you very much for watching this video and supporting my content. I hope you have a good couple of days until I see you next. And as always, until next time.